Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with the caster, Rob. And Rob, you got to watch some exciting games this week. What stood out most to you? I think uh, overall, uh, just as I was saying to the guys on the desk, uh, class diversity. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool to see all these different decks come in. Uh, I think it's cool to see the people who really, they come in and they want to make their mark as players with these different classes. Obviously, the two Shaman players we've had, both Hot Form and Oskaka bringing Rogue. And, you know, Patron Warrior continuing to stick around. I think it's awesome to see that, you know, it's a deck that even post changes is being played at a really high level. Yeah, it's, it's been incredible, especially considering how little time that these players have had to prepare. Did you talk to them and get any insight into the kind of scramble between uh, Americas and this tournament? Yeah, everyone kind of has their own preparation rituals. Uh, obviously, Oskaka was talking about it. You know, he talks a lot with Oskaka and other members, or not Oskaka. Oskaka talks to Oskaka as well as Zixo and members of his team. Uh, you know, obviously, other players, Hot Form, you know, talking to him, he does a lot of preparation by himself, uh, by playing on ladder, even playing on EU as opposed to NA. So. Uh, I think it's really interesting to kind of see how these players are, are going through and what will change, if anything, going into you know BlizzCon itself. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone qualifying for the top eight is going to be nose down in the book studying for BlizzCon next weekend. And uh, we have one more match coming at you. Don't go anywhere. It's about to start. Dai Mong versus... Pen Ping Ho! Battle of the Shamans begins. A uh, very different approach to the lineups, a very different approach to the Shaman, even. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, the match so far? Well, it seems pretty amazing. We have, we have, there's two Shaman players in the tournament, and they are going to be facing each other now. There's four classes between these guys. Both of them are playing Hunter, both of them are playing Shaman, but Diamond with the more aggressive lineup. His hunter is a base hunter and his shaman is a mech shaman. While Ping Ping Ho is bringing mid range hunter and the totem shaman. Yeah, and uh, Diamond's uh, paladin is the secret paladin as well. So he's going with a very aggressive lineup overall, while Ping Ping Ho has more of a sort of mid range controlling style of decks. Yeah, um, I think Ping Ming Ho's really uh, been one to shine so far in the tournament. Uh, he's been a player that, uh, at least in the Western world, we haven't really seen play very much or at all? I'm, he, I'm not even sure. He some, played yeah. in some open events. He okay. actually, uh, uh, I believe he lived in the U.S. for a while. Okay. Uh, and he's played in, uh, I believe he qualified for the, the ESL Legendary Series mm -hmm. uh, last season. And uh, there he was actually, uh, I, I remember I was trying out his Shaman deck, incidentally, oh, that? Uh, from that event uh, a, you know, quite a while ago. And here he is playing Shaman again. Yeah. All right. Really it is, uh, is the China region versus the uh, Asia Pacific. So uh, you, can, uh, you can tell us who will win. Have your guesses. Keep mindful. Um, so far, uh, back back to Ping Ping Ho. I, I think uh, I think he's you know one of the most loved players of the tournament just because on one hand he's got that uh, very hilarious personality where you know he's he's kind of like a reserved guy, but uh, when the camera is on, it's 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 a, it's a different face and uh, it's it's a it's a welcome one. And in in the game, he's he's really spinning up all all these decks. Um, we, we talk about how players often kind of twist the decks a little bit to, to, to shape a tournament. But Ping Ping Ho really pushes that a little bit more than other players have. We've seen, uh, it, even in this Hunter deck that he's playing now, we've seen like Fell Reaver. We've seen just, just slightly unusual things that, that we really don't see uh, other players push to that degree. So while this is the Battle of the Shaman, no Shaman in the first game. We have uh, Daimeng playing his secret Paladin deck while Ping Ping Ho is playing that uh, Fell Reaver Hunter deck. Double Secret Keepers to start things off. The Secret Keeper gets plus one, plus one for every secret that's being played, and not only the Paladin Secrets. Bring out your dead? <laughs> Bring out your dead. <laughs> Reminiscent of Undertaker, way back when. Yeah. And uh, Secret Keeper is uh, is interesting in that it actually makes many of the, the cards that are generally the worst cards in your deck to draw quite good, especially when you have them in multiples. So here, Daimang's hand does not have any secrets to uh, complement those Secret Keeper. I think it's still a pretty decent hand as long as he just draws one Secret yeah. next turn. Yeah, he, he really needs some help with that. Right now, it's not looking that spectacular in case that he does not find that Secret. And here, this is an interesting spot for Pim Ping Ho as well, because he he has to imagine that there's a very good chance that Daimang does have a Secret. So, uh, coining out a Mad Scientist, not necessarily as attractive as it would be against just 1-2, for instance, or even just a 2-2 a two -two or 3-2. Also, you can just wait. I, 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 if you wait, you have the power to choose if you think Mad Scientist or Quick Shot is going to work next turn, mm -hmm. or if you think it won't, you can choose the bow. You just have you just have so many more options if, if you wait. So if you don't wait, 
He must be really deliberate. He must know a lot more than uh, than what's actually going on right now. now this is one of the toughest turn ones that I've ever seen. I wouldn't be too, surpri too surprised if he even chose to coin out the quick shot to take out the potential of double secrets coming out from Diamond on turn yeah. two. Yeah, and there it is. He decides to take the uh, secret keeper down right now. And Diamond has to be pretty happy about that, given that, that he didn't even have a secret to follow up with that secret keeper. Uh, he, and he doesn't find one in turn two either. But hello, there's yes. the Anoyatron, perfectly on curve. Diamond is actually playing two Anoyatrons, if I remember correctly. I believe um, it's the double Anoyatron and double Redemption, which works very well with the, the right. Divine Shield minion. Yep. Right. The, the idea is that uh, we start going face earlier than other decks could. Uh, just by defending our other minions <laughs> with uh, with a Noitron. Oh, and there there is the other one. That's, That's the second Noitron. It was uh, actually kind of amusing. Yana and I were back watching the last match. We were saying, did we even see these Patron Warrior decks draw a uh, Fiery War Axe? And instantly he just draws <laughs> both of them. <laughs> and we just mentioned the, the double Noitron. And here comes the second Noitron. Yep. Just like that. <laughs> Well, the other bow draw kind of suggests you should be playing that. Unleash is pretty good, but uh, I think you have a lot of good unleashes throughout the game against the Secret Pally. The bow is quite weak here against the, the two Divine Shields. He could use the the Mad Scientist to take off one of them, bow down the other. Uh, using bow to kill uh, kill just these uh, these two drops here, not super exciting, but mm -hmm. it does it does enable him to potentially play trap into uh, something else next turn. Yeah, he really only has two options here. It's either the bow or the unleash. You don't want to play the freezing trap into the into the secret keeper, and with two bows in his hand. I think he's very likely to play one of those right now to try yeah. get the value out of those. Quickly. And on the other hand, unleash the hounds. While three minions is it's not bad. It's very likely that against the against Paladin, who you know is running some things like double master of a battle, that you will get even more value from it later on. And also the unleash just doesn't match up very well against the one twos. Even if you could get the divine shields off, your uh, your, your hounds aren't really doing very much to uh, conclude them from the board. Yeah. Um, I wonder what you do here if you're diming. Uh, usually, if you're aggressive, you want to stay aggressive, but he has a pretty decent opportunity to get rid of a freeze trap. The issue is, if you do that, you give him another charge in your bow. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you probably don't want to, like, Diming doesn't have the information that there's a second bow waiting, so that extra charge it would be really painful. And uh, Diming <laughs> drawing that pile of the shredder on curve. He hasn't drawn a single secret, and he has a mysterious challenger waiting in his hand. Mm, things that is are really, really the dream. Yeah, things are looking really good for Diming right now. But being being Ho with that unleash, if he gets something like a knife juggler, he might be able to turn things around. He could just play the Unleash now. Uh, yeah, it feels like the strongest play still. Use the uh, use the Mad Scientist and one of the Hounds to to clear off the Anoyotron, then use the Bow to kill the Shredder to at least take a significant amount of damage off the board. He will get a Secret as well from oh, the, yeah. the Mad Scientist dying. The Freezing Trap with only Pilot the Shredder on your opponent's side of the board is quite powerful. Yeah, that's, that's the other option, just killing the, the Secret Keeper and leaving just the Shredder up against the, the Freezing Trap, assuming that's the, uh, the trap that he does get. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't quite remember what traps are in his deck, but often when you run one Freeze Trap, you'll, you'll pair it up with another. Yep. I really like this. I think that's yeah. quite powerful. There's no real charge minions in the Paladin deck. I don't think there's any, actually. So that and sweater is going to be... Uh, oh, man. This actually, banana. assuming this is a freezing trap, it actually very well neutralizes Diamond's best play this turn, which would otherwise be this Blessing of Kings to make this individual large threat. Yeah. And so it's, it's so good, it would actually probably delay the attack, so you can bow and start putting pushing for some more damage. Mm. Do you just kings anyway? Because you're not going to kings on turn 6 or 7. I think it's a totally reasonable play. Uh, your only other option is really just to make a make a one one, and your opponent does have two hounds that could clear mm -hmm. them off very easily. Yeah. So I think I think trying to set up a big threat that you can eventually get to connect is probably uh, uh, the strongest use of this turn. Mm -hmm. I like it as well because he is playing those divine favors. So getting the blessing of kings out of his hand right now is going to allow him to draw more cards later on. But when when is the next attack? Like, if, if you kings here, you Mysterious Challenger next turn, and then you Dr. Boom. That's a valid point for sure. You're but attacking on turn 8. But on the yep. other hand, At like best. But that 1-1 one, one is so easily cleared that I don't think it really helps with the problem. Mm -hmm. I like the uh, the Knife Trigger, just Eagle Horn bow here, but the uh, the Fell Reaver kind of accelerates the clock by a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I like that as well. Yeah, quite Fell a bit. Reaver does a lot of damage very fast. I and mean, that's, that's the reason you play it, really, mm -hmm. in a deck like this. And uh, I, I think that, that Pimping Ho here, he's able to trade this off. If he's able to play Fell Reaver, each of those individual attacks that he's going to you know, potentially get off of, uh, of the Reaver, they do a whole lot of damage. 
So I, I, it's interesting that the juggler doesn't really have a huge impact. Bow as well, not a huge impact. Mm -hmm. I would expect to see Felreaver to come down this time. Oh yeah, I mean, if you put it in your deck, what's a better time for it than this right here? Turn five, you're going to be able to de deal with that one when your opponent can't really trade into it. You know that he's not playing things like Alder Peacekeeper or Big Game Hunter. Just seems perfect to me. Yep, and here comes Fel Reaver. All right, the Reaper has hit the board. I always remember Fel Reapers just stomping on me when I was walking around, uh, what was it, the Outland. Oh, equality, but oh, not good here. enough. Not all right, but not gonna do it. still going to play that uh, Mysterious Challenger, get all of his secrets. Four secrets. <laughs> Sick on right. Bell Reaver. Well, we've got a plan. <laughs> the main, well, the thing is, I don't know if you can actually execute that plan because the main thing that you have to do this turn is maintain your freeze trap. So if, if, you're, if you're attacking with the 1-1 to trigger the get down, you have to kill that again. So yeah. you either lose eight damage or play the bow, which means you're playing the bow. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're playing the bow for sure. Uh, it feels pretty, pretty bad to not drop a bigger minion. And with the bow, he can only play the knife juggler, which is not that great, but those minions are so huge, you really want to get value out of the trap. You also really want the Avenge to hit the shredder, which makes it so freeze trap is even more powerful. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's see where it goes. If the Avenge goes in the Shredder here, he can potentially just use his Fel Reaver to kill the Mysterious Challenger. It does not. He does have the option to trade. He does. That's, uh, I, I don't that's know. That's a tough option. Yeah. I mean, if you're playing this kind of Hunter, you don't really want to be oh, trading. You are leaving your opponent. You get, you get a Knife Juggler in play. You have a... Uh, a uh, bow in play, and your opponent has just one minion, and you have a three. He does go face. Yep, getting that eight damage is quite a huge chunk. Gog Hammer. Gog Hammer is potentially huge here. Yeah, you can wow. actually clear the board and end with a 9 8 taunt. Yeah, he can attack. No, no, no he can end with a 13 12 taunt over the Kings. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's... It's uh, a lot yeah. of eggs in one basket. Really, yeah, you really want to stack that, I'm not sure. I, apparently he does. Yep, just hoping for no Iron Big Owl. And push for lethal. Big Big Owl doesn't have it. He has the Freeze Trap, which actually works. Oh yeah, that is true. The Freezing Trap is good enough He has now. Freeze Trap and then... You kind of want to pop that. <laughs> you, <laughs> you still, still a 13 Yeah, you, you have to pop board. that with the Haunted Creeper, but you cannot play it. You have to play one of the other five drops, so you have to go Lothrop or Fell Reaver. Yeah, this is this is a really really awkward spot for Feng Feng Hao. He he would love to be able to uh, do something with that Fell Reaver other than sacrifice mm -hmm. the Divine Shield. He can't afford to use his weapon to break the Divine Shield. It would just kill him. He's at ten health. Well, the the Lothrop and the Fell Reaver would both threaten lethal if he gets a Silence next turn. Yes. So maybe you just don't want to lose your entire deck and maybe cancel some options by playing the um, the Lothip. If he does have, uh, if he has, what, seven, le more than seven cards in his deck, or seven or more cards, mm -hmm. the Fel Reaver is basically the same card, although a Lothip does close out the possibility of something like a quality concentration. Yeah. So I think Lothip is generally the stronger play here because either of them is lethal. Yeah, I definitely agree with this. And if he had those double Fel Reavers on the board, for example, the, every single card that Diamond plays would mill him for six and he, couldn't even have a chance to draw that. Uh, <laughs> he wouldn't even have a chance to draw that yeah, owl. It is possible if he played the second Fell Reaver that Dimeg would be able to just play two cards and remove the rest of his deck from the game. Yeah. All right. Well, this is Doctor Boom. Looks like it's coming down, and this is Owl or No. Right. He has, he has Hunter's game. Marks, but they're not going to work here. Is this Iron Beak Owl they picks up? Oh, Hunter's it is going to be Hunter's uh, Mark. It is Hunter's Mark, but that's not enough. No, he's, he's, he's one. every bit of damage. Yeah, he's he's basically two triggers short of, uh, of killing his opponent from that. Yeah, that's a huge problem right there. And it has Divine Shield and Taunt. Mm -hmm. I think he actually has to play Hunter's Mark to stay alive. He has to play Hunter's Mark and attack into the 13 to 12 <laughs> twice with his creatures. But then he just dies to the, yeah, the Dr. Boom, Still right? dead on just both. Yeah, he's still dead to the, the Boom Bot. Oh, right. He can't clear both the Boom Bots, so the Boom will get the attack through the Freeze Trap. Yeah. That mysterious challenger. That I, I haven't seen so anything quite like it's that. So big! Mm -hmm. <laughs> For <laughs> only six mana, get yours today. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he had a little bit more invested in that yeah, particular one. <laughs> Bless him, kicks a cock hammer helped, and Daifeng takes a 1 0 lead over Pin Ping Ho. But a very close match um, with, with both players having extremely big threats on the board. 
Um, it's just a game that can be closed out at any moment. Yeah, when, when there's things like Fell Reavers and Mysterious Challengers and Dr. Boom, it's just a battle of haymakers here. And yep. uh, Daimeng had the, the one that was the most stable and uh, was able to close things out. Yeah, Bing Ping Hammer Yeah, Bing Ping Ho just simply couldn't answer the Go Hammer there. I think we have seen one silence in Bing Ping Ho's deck. I think uh, the moment we started talking about there not being a silence because there's the Hunter's Marks, he ended mm -hmm. up getting an Owl. So I think there was a, a fairly decent chance that he would yeah. draw it. Uh, I mean, that, that game didn't go very long. But I believe the Fell Reaver discarded either nine or twelve cards from the deck, so there really wasn't more than like maybe you know seven or nine cards. There definitely were. Uh, the chances were really high for him to draw the owl if he had one in, or or even two in his deck. The, the, the hunter's marks. I'm gonna guess he probably has one owl. Probably, it's, yeah. it's very unusual right. for hunter decks to run. Uh, that many things to, to punch through big minions. In particular, Felry was usually bigger than what's on the other side. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that he does have the Hunter's Marks rather than Silence Effects with those Felry Reavers in his deck. All right, well, in the end, Dai Meng does take the opening game in their match. And uh, to honor him, let's uh, have some words from him talking about how he got one of his nicknames. <laughs> Gangeshi,我是在镜头上打大比赛的时候,他们观众们会从弹幕上直接通过镜头来看到我,然后他们会觉得镜头上我显得像三十多岁,像四十岁,像一个中年的男人,他们会说这个难道是大学生吗?所
he really wants to play the yeah, shade. Looks like he is going, going with shade. He might get punished no, for it, no, depending. No. <laughs> Tough decision definitely here for Pimping Ho. Because like, if you choose to play the shade and Daimeng picks up a pile of the shredder, he can actually play Mick Warper, <laughs> zap and the shredder. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, we're right. right. This is kind of a disaster case. But generally, it's not. Generally, when you see a Mech Warper, you don't expect the other one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Daimeng does actually have the opportunity to play Mech Warper and Whirling, even with just his hand right now, and Whirling Zapmatic and Totem. And there's a possibility of a Stone Claw Totem coming off there, which could help protect it forward very well. Does he, uh, get he picks up oh, Power Maze, maze. Which That's is actually not a good draw. It's not what he's looking for right no. now. He, he would have loved to play the Power Mace this turn and, and start hitting with it. But if this is Stone Claw, it's nope. not. It's Healing Stream. So, uh, Pimping Ho dodging a bullet right there. He will actually have a, a pretty reasonable turn here uh, open to him. Oh, yeah. He can rot one of the mech. No, sorry. He's, he's likely to rot the Zapomatic. Because that has to get dealt with. And. Uh, the Shade can take out the Mech Warper without dying, and that's yeah. not possible in case of the Zabomatic. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not too bad. For, for as aggressive of a hand as Daiming had, um, it really didn't turn out as badly as it, it absolutely could have. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, Pimping Ho has a reasonable uh, number of solutions between the hero power to deal with the uh, the abusive sergeant, or, and then two other ways to, to kill either the Mech Warper or the Zapmatic, depending on whether he wants to uh, try to preserve his life total or keep his opponent from kind of going crazy. Daiming does have a very small hand left, mm -hmm. but, but uh, Pimping Ho may be worried about the possibility of a Bell Reaver coming out next turn. Uh, I, I don't know that we've seen them from Daiming's deck. Not yet, I believe. Oh, no but uh, it's definitely a, a card that is a very threatening minion out of Mech uh, Shaman. One thing that's kind of uh, rewarding is like the Shade actually allowed him to do this play. Yeah. Um, if, if he didn't play the Shade, Whirling Zapmatic would have got a tax in. That is bad news. It kind of worked out in the end, playing the Shade first, but if there was that uh, that Pilot of Shredder or something similar, things could have went really bad. Right, so the mm, Power that's, Mace... That's a pretty one. decent draw because now you, you can no longer deny the Power Mace Death Rattle. A swipe would be excellent here for Pipping Ho. He does not have one, however. Uh, a Druid of the Claw is okay. <laughs> well, but five. yeah, he's... <laughs> He like has a... Uh, five fives. I think he should play the five drop here. Five of a kind. <laughs> uh, I, wonder, I wonder what the, the best one is, though. Um, I, I'm thinking Druid of the Claw, but maybe even in charge. Yeah, if he did, if he does choose to play Druid of the Claw in charge mode, he can uh, take out either of the minions. Though that, at that point, one uh, his, his uh, only left two health on the Druid, and yeah. Power Mace will kill his Druid of the Claw and buff whatever's left. It would die to the weapon, yeah. So most likely we're going to see the Taunt here. Yeah. I would expect if if we play it in Taunt, there's a 50% chance that it goes, that the buff lands on the 2-1. And if that's the case, you deal with the bigger minion. So I, absolutely, that's true. Yeah. But we know that Daimek does have like that Iron Beak Owl in his hand, so it's possible that he would just push for damage. I think with one card in your hand, uh, that is quite likely. He's going for the Druid of the Claw. Rope is burning. And there's but the bear. If if the buff lands on the 2-3. Power Mace. Ah, that's not really what you're looking for here. It's a great card, but he already had one, so that's optimal. It's so hard to deal with if the buff lands on the 2-3 here. And there it is. It on does. The two, so, Pippin Ho already had a 12 life on <laughs> turn 5. Really looking for Oh, food there here. we go. That's a Big, big draw for Pipping Ho here. And uh, I have to imagine he may just use his bear's health to yes. help take down the Mech Warper rather than, yes. than hit, hit it with his own face. He's I think so uh, low. He kind of has to. I think you're just going to clear the totems. At the very least, the spell damage totem. Yeah. Yeah, he cannot huh? face tank the four here. There's no way. He knows his opponent is playing Crackle, Lava Burst, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, it's to going down all the nine. totems with his hero power. And uh, he gains a little bit of life. The one armor that he's able to, uh, to get on his hero here is pretty important in the uh, the way that the, the Mech Shaman deck wins from this position. Yeah, with that swipe top deck, Ping Ping Ho now with the board control. And Daimeng might struggle to deal that remaining bit of damage. Top taken from turn six. <laughs> yeah. Time waits for no one. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see what it's going to be. It is a rock biter, I believe, uh, and that can be a good draw if he gets a wind through activator like a doom hammer. But um, often in, in this type of deck, you don't see more than one doom hammer, and whirling zapmatics are unlikely to get any attacks in from this stage. Just a clear off bear, not going face just yet, not relying on 
not uh, willing to rely on top decking that lava burst. The, this is the sort of position where the Mech Shaman deck, it, you're you're in a really really rough spot to try and come back. Period. Mm -hmm. I I imagine a lot of a lot of spots uh, going face there. It does give you the ability to at least draw like running turn spells. Uh, now you know Pimping Ho is just going to be able to start playing his his big minion parade. And uh, I, it's going to be difficult for Diamond to get much more damage than is it direct. I don't know if I like the Druid of the Claw. I feel like if things go wrong with the Druid of the Claw, you don't have an immediate answer to a threat. Um, like, if he plays any mech and deals... Oh, oh that's not a threat, though. That, that is not master, a threat. Not what Diamond wants But e right even if you got, like, uh, like maybe just the other Whirling Zapomatic, it would go uncontested with the Rock Biter, right? And uh, down goes the bear, but the buff gets wasted. Then Dog Dogmaster, even though it works well with the mechs, it is not a mech by itself. And boom! Laid up that totem, one damage. <laughs> All he needs now is a Totemic Might. Well, the Keeper of the Grove is, is a really good draw. It lets him play a 5-drop along with it. And uh, the Cogmaster, while it is a 1-2, the chance that it hits for a 3 is um, is quite reasonable. You really have, have to deal with the potential value of that threat. Yep, goes for the Drake over the load. No real reason to play the load, but, but with the extra card draw from the Azure Drake, he, he could be. Uh, he increases his chance of finding an Ancient of Lore for the heal, just secure the game, or a big taunt. The thing with Lothab is, um, often a Shaman will save all his burn cards at the very end of the game, but sometimes it's not true when there's a spell damage in play. Ah, he gets a Crackle. He's still in the game. He might pick up a Lava Burst from the top. Oh. Therefore, that, so now, that is a real problem here. Yeah, that's a huge problem because with that low roll, even the Lava Burst would be a tiny bit off. And here I, th I believe that Pimping Ho can clear the Totem and set up Lethal next turn. Even with the Lothab, I think. Yeah, we can yeah. play Lothab, and I believe that will, will leave Daimeng with very unlikely to have anything in his deck that can win the game. Yep. Well, if he doesn't, if he doesn't hero power, a Crackle, he'll have 8 mana, a Crackle will cost 7. So yeah, you're right, he cannot Totem. Yep. He can't Totem and Crackle for 7 if he doesn't hero power, because he's overloaded for 1 and Crackle will cost 7 That's mana. That's right, he has to overload. No, he's still thinking here, but almost certainly we will see the Lothab and uh, full clear on the, ming on the oh, Totem. Nice I really don't believe there's any card in the entire game that kills him at 7 if Lothab is down. There shouldn't be anything. The uh, totems go down, and uh, just four damage to the face. That sets up more than enough on Ragnaros? Pimping Ho's side of the board. Ragnaros? <laughs> Ragnaros would do it. <laughs> um, Upper Gnome, not so much. All right, well, the Shaman does not take this game, and the series has evened out. That's a, that's a, a clutch win for Pimping Ho. That is right. a, a matchup that he went into expecting to be the underdog, and he managed to pull it out. Yeah, um... We talked about that. I, I, I feel like the the underdog of, of the old Shaman versus Druid is, is not quite as bad as it is these days. Um, I mean, we saw a lot of back and forth game. The Shaman had an excellent opener. He did. And the Druid had a pretty good one. But I feel like Shaman probably had a better opener. And it, it still didn't end up taking it. It fell a little bit flat. He had those double mech warp mm -hmm. warpers, which is usually the best possible thing. But he didn't have any more mechs to go with it. He didn't. He never found the pilot shredder. He couldn't really utilize the, the discounts from those mech warpers. Yeah. Usually the the, the mech warper is important to bridge you to things like the pilot shredder, mm -hmm. things like fell reaver. We actually, I'm not certain that we've seen fell reaver. Never seen from a fell reaver from that deck, I believe. We, and, and seeing the abusive sergeants and leper gnomes, looks like his deck is even lower to the ground than the typical uh, mech shaman deck that we see. So it's possible that that particular matchup against Druid may be a bit different with so many yeah. one health minions that the hero power can clear. All right, well, uh, still in the game, we have two Hunters, two Shamans, but those are four very distinct decks. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see the, these, these players bringing uh, many of these not terribly popular classes with Shaman, uh, but even having very different takes on the strategy there. Here we have uh, Daimeng playing uh, a face hunter, a very face hunter, oh, yes. uh, I, I think is the more correct way to put it. <laughs> and we have uh, Pimpo playing uh, a mid-range hunter, but the Fell Reavers really cannot be answered by, by uh, a face hunter. Face hunters aren't running cards like Hunter's Mark or anything like that. They're, they're really just closing out the game the, the entire, the entire like, range of turns. So I feel like if, if a Fell Reaver comes down, mm -hmm. that 
Peeping Hoe can actually push for more face damage than the face hunter can, where traditionally this would otherwise be a, a heavily favored match for the face hunter. Yeah, with the Fell Reaver, he might be able to race with the face hunter quite efficiently. We've seen this matchup multiple times uh, during the, the past few days in this tournament. And uh, it's has usually been the face hunter who has come out on top. <laughs> Look at that! Look at <laughs> four, four. There's five cards and total right. mana cost four. Them. Okay. <laughs> Pimping Ho like does that have match earlier. Yeah. Pimping Ho does have an excellent answer though. He has the Unleash the Hounds, which he kept in his opening hand. So if, if Diamond does coin double one drop, <laughs> five, five. <laughs> All right. He is. What uh, a hand. <laughs> that is uh, that is an aggressive I hand, one ready. might say. No two drop. I think that's actually the end. Like, <laughs> as well, as good as your hand is, you are taking so much damage. The key thing actually is that Diamond had two has two copies of Organ Infiltrator in his hand that he can play next turn. So even if Pimping Ho does play that Unleash the Hounds, he won't be able to clear the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that hand is absolutely fantastic for this. I mean, even with that Unleash, yeah, he will be able to clear it. But there's still so much damage coming in from those. And if Diamond manages to pick up something like Eaglehorn Bow, some char Chargers. This game might be over before that Fell Reaver comes down from the right. Ball. I mean, that's 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 what the that game is all about. Can Dai Meng squeeze out enough damage before the Fell Reaver oh, makes oh. a difference? And it seems like he can, even though Ping Ping Ho has that Unleash the Hounds. It seems like it doesn't. It probably won't prevent enough, but maybe it's a bit closer than than we're kind of giving it. Because if Ping Ping Ho can can pull out maybe a taunt to stop the damage after the Fell Reaver is played. Maybe something like that can happen. Oh, Clive Zuka. Wow. He might choose to go for that instead of the one drops just because of the unleash. I, I have to imagine that, that, that the double worgen is, is more attractive here because he can also play, uh, even if he does get his board cleared, he can play deckhand Clive Zuka on a future turn and get a bunch of just burst damage up front. These also require some setup because they're, yeah. they're minions that don't have charge. That's true. And, and in case that there was no Unleash the Hounds, the game would just end right here. Yeah, yes. Because there are no It'd explosive be completely traps. Completely over. Yes. There are no explosive traps in Ping Ping Post deck. He's playing the mid range variant, so there's freezing instead. So this is really the best answer Ping Ping Ho could possibly have here, but he's still taking another four damage from these Worgen Infiltrators. Job's done. Rusty Horn, not really yeah. particularly relevant as a, uh, as a spell here. And the draw is quick shot. Oh, that's oh, that, a good that one. I should see yeah. some play. That's a very good one. <laughs> and uh, Daimeng just continues to point all of his minions at the opposing Rexar. The weapon might hit a 1 1, though. Yep, that might. Prevent the draw. Oh, yeah. There's a face there. Yeah. <laughs> Must attack the face with taunt. <laughs> so much damage. And the uh, Ping Ping Ho does have those trades with the 1 1. It's not too bad, but there's still going to be one remaining. and. Probably forced to just play the straighter and ignore the deckhand for now. It's it's interesting that the uh, the ability of the Clockwork Gnome here is actually kind of a liability for Diamond. He'd love to be able to get an extra draw of that quick shot. Oh, he still might. He, he might, but it is it is a little bit worse than uh, than otherwise. Like, mm -hmm. okay, so Eagle Horn Bow here. He's just gonna get in with his uh, hero, I assume. Uh, no, he's actually going oh. to. Yeah, he wants to maximize hero power. He wants okay. to play the bow. Yeah, yeah, next yeah no, that, turn that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. The, the the card draw doesn't really matter when you're filming. It's Absolutely, this low on yeah. HP. No, there's there's basically there's virtually no way for Pimping Ho to to actually get out of this position. <laughs> oh, there is. Uh, I think uh, I think a Vitality Totem would actually do it. So okay. you kill command <laughs> kill command your own Shredder. I mean, it seems like. Oh, that. that's true. You need the Vitality Totem this turn to actually win. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> the, the, ol the only way he actually stays alive is by killing off the Worgen oh, and then kill commanding his own Shredder oh. and getting a Vitality Totem. The chances for that are fairly low. Basically zero, because you'd never make that play. Yep. Well, actually, Diamond is one damage off for now. But yeah, it's not over I'm yet, sure. but it's, it's... Yeah, but, but it's Vitality Totem power. only yeah. heals for four. That's true. And you're taking five next turn from yeah. the second weapon hitting the hero power. So you really you really did need the Vitality Totem that last yeah. turn. He needed I, don't, I don't believe that he's actually sorry. Uh, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, looks like uh, Daimeng is going to take a, a quick third game over Pimping Ho, leaving him up in the series of two games to one. Now it's just down to that Shaman deck. It is down to that Shaman deck, and I mean, I I know it's it's done fair at this tournament, and it's done fair at previous tournaments in the past. I would say that in the recent past, it's not done particularly well. In fact, uh, 
Uh, I think in some of the tournaments it was known as the double lava burst, uh, <laughs> dreadful wonder of, of Hearthstone, <laughs> where you just draw these burn spells, but your opponent would be out of range every single game. It is interesting to me to see that Daimeng has chosen to bring Mech Shaman to this event, because that's that's a deck that's excellent against control decks, excellent against mid-range decks. It's very poor in general against other aggressive decks. And this is a metagame where there are quite a few of those. There's lots of Muster for Battles. There's lots of uh, Zoo decks, Hunter decks. So I, I think that that deck will very very likely struggle against Pimping Ho's Hunter deck, but may overcome in the Shaman Mirror. Well, the other thing to consider is um, we talked about how much of a counter it used to be against Druid, but it seems like the, the, the deck has kind of left that tech out of it, right? Like, yeah. there's there's no Fell Reavers. There's, there's much more early game that class like Druid can deal with. It seems like they're not really targeting Druid either. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like all of, all of those cards that are generally good against Druid were missing Begin. from the deck. But the Druid is already out of the way. Oh, there is that pilot of the Shredder. He just didn't draw it last time. And so Pimping Ho with uh, his Hunter deck here against uh, Daimeng's Mech Shaman. Pimping Ho is on the ropes now. He needs, to, uh, he needs to win this game and the next in order to punch his ticket to BlizzCon. We'll see if the Hunter works out here. He will need some of those uh, key cards, like Unleash the Hounds, to be able to fight against the Shaman early on. Glaivezuka seems like a pretty good card, even though two damage is often not enough for a lot of the mechs. It's good enough for the ones that kill you very quickly, like the Zappomatics. <laughs> That's true, does clear the Zappomatic. The most important thing for the Hunter is actually finding the early minions. You really want to be able to remove your opponent's minions without face tanking them Job with a the weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, the damage out of the mech Shaman is its, its most dangerous thing. and. Unlike Hunter, uh, Shaman doesn't have a hero power that deals damage. So if the Hunter is able to trade off the board, ultimately ends up basically grinding the Shaman down with its hero power in this matchup. The ha starting hand from Bing Bing Ho is looking quite solid. It's very good. Diamond's hand also not bad, but uh, with a knife juggler and unleash the hounds, he might be able to to just uh, on turn five unleash with the with the juggles, and uh, it might be something that Diamond can't really clear. Oh, another unleash! In general, you don't want to see two in your hand. But against the Shaman... Against this Shaman. <laughs> against this Shaman in particular, it, uh, it's uh, it's actually a nice card to draw. That's right. Especially with that ho that Knife Juggler as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you, you can't be playing the Knife Juggler here. Oh, yeah. That is a death Creeper sentence. This turn. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah Honey Creeper lines up very, very well against Lepernome. Uh, can remove it and leave you with the two minions on the board. And if your opponent does play, say, additional minions with one health, yeah, you juggles. have the Knife Juggler that you can possibly play the next turn as well. Yep, the Creeper does seem like the best possible thing Ping Ping, Ping, Ping Ho could even hope for here. And uh, he's still thinking about it, potentially thinking about I the won. next turns, or trying to throw off his opponent by maybe faking that he would ha also have a mad scientist in his hand. Yeah, we've seen a lot of players uh, really take their time on the early turns, even when they may not have a lot of decisions. Uh, you have a limited amount of time in the game, really, with well each number of turns you have. So Just think about for, everything. Yeah, for players who try to calculate a lot, uh, while you may not necessarily have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things to think about right now. You do have turns ahead to plan for. And here, Diamond picking up a Warlord Zapomatic, a very strong, uh, very strong draw. Though that uh, unleash the hounds, one of them in Pimping his hand is likely going to you. Like you have to play it here. Yeah, yeah. It has to go the, for it. The juggler's best case is the best outcome. Yeah, <laughs> but it feels like such a risk. You shouldn't be, you know, putting your uh, potentially your tournament line on. Yeah, and another thing to consider is that not only would it be risky to play the juggler here and hope that the juggles finish off the Zabomatic, but saving it for the second unleash on turn five might be extremely powerful. So uh, most likely just gonna see an unleash the hounds, getting seeing that Zabomatic and the Lepernome getting cleared off the board. Mm -hmm. Though Pimping Ho actually interestingly has the option if he chooses to uh, use the hounds, all of the hounds, or to potentially use uh, the Haunted Creeper as one of the oh things. Yeah. So he could leave himself, if he wanted, with multiple minions in play uh, and keep the... Uh, the I think that's most likely to like happen. Yeah. Around. I think that's most likely to happen just because next turn he's going to become the Animal Companion. Yeah. Yeah, against a deck that you know is not running any kind of AoE, there's no Lightning Storm. You'd rather have three 1-1s one than 1-2 one, one with the Death Rattle. Yeah, I, de I definitely agree with this play from Pimping Ho. It also leaves them, even if he didn't play anything else next turn, these minions can contest the Mech Warper or potentially uh, contest something like that Shredder. Yeah, getting, getting that three mana pile of the Shredder and the Clockwork Gnome here, it's quite nice. The Clockwork Gnome, not spectacular. It's going to get Shredder with one of the 1-1s. One but still, I like not the bow here. Um, but let's let's talk about the animal companion possibilities. So, Leoc is generally pretty good when you have a board of three creatures. 
but with every single minion having an odd number of health, it really doesn't do anything. <laughs> no, it doesn't do anything at all. Uh, well, it, it kind of lets you trade a little bit better if you want to do yeah. three damage to something. I guess, but like if if your if your goal was to kill the shredder and like a two health creature comes out, it could right. accomplish that. But that's about it. Yeah, pretty much. So the eagle horn bow does seem a little bit more likely. How about the other outcomes? If he was to get a Huffer or a Leoc? Uh, Huffer would have to go Misha? into the uh, the shredder, uh, and that could that could possibly be a. Uh, close to a Leoc. The, the thing with Leoc is you, you kind of do that task and you still keep the 2-4. Um, Misha can get punished a lot. I don't know, bad things. Yeah, Eagle Horn Bow also leaves you up the weapon that you can use next turn as well. If uh, Dynamic does play something like the Flame Tongue put in his hand, you have, even if your other minions die, you have a reasonable way to remove it. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah, he really wants that Juggler Unleashed to be as potent as possible. Yeah. And he doesn't imagine that the 2-1 is going to attack for his 1-1 creature. So he's kind of uh, leveraging the remaining life total that he has to push for a, a higher tempo this play next turn. pretty dangerous, though, because he's, not only did he leave the 2-power minion up, but this, this gives additional 2 damage from that Flame Hunt totem. I, I still like it, though. It's so risky. He's, he went down to 12 HP already. Yeah. And he's playing Hunter that cannot heal anyhow. So those crackles, those lava bursts might be a huge right. problem. Right. I mean, one one of the interesting things here is that he actually doesn't want to kill the 4-1 uh, because if... Okay, well, he killed the 4-1. But in, in the case that he didn't, um, he had the option to kill the the zero attack totem, which I guess died anyway. Okay, I'm, I'm just getting countered here pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that was a excellent, uh, excellent hits from the, uh, the juggler there, taking out the entire board of Daime and leaving Pimping Ho with very solid board here, but very low life. Very, total. very low life. I, I have to imagine we're going to see this power base go straight to the face. Oh yeah, with this play, unless there's a taunt coming up from Pimping Ho, Daime is one lava burst off for this. Yeah, or a crackle, or a crackle, or some crackle. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Pimping Ho here, he has he has a pretty substantial clock himself. Hoping for a Misha. And he gets Misha it. That's yes. a Misha. That's, no juggle, that, is, though. that is big. Though there is well, the, the owl in Daimang's yeah. hand. It Ooh. looks better than it actually is. I'm actually is, surprised yeah. to see the quick shot. I thought that this game uh, cannot last very much longer. And having the quick shot for the Fell Reaver can give you overall more tempo. Though I, I think that Daimang, uh, with any damage, would actually kill Pimping Ho if he had not killed that. Because the owl plus the uh, power mace. No, I, I think he should have killed that, but with the kill command, so he could play oh, the quick sure. shot and the fell reaver next turn. Now he can only play the fell reaver. How much damage is that? This he has is one damage off, I believe. No, or does he have it? No, he is one off. Yeah, it looks like there's seven, seven eight, from nine, the hand ten and ten plus five. There oh, does okay. it. I believe that's yeah, that's yeah, going to be it. Yeah. <laughs> he just knew he'd get the other one. What am I talking about? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Kill Command and Quick Shot finishes off Diamond, and we are going to Game 5 in the Battle of Shaman versus Shaman. We are going to have it's like this we Shaman scripted Shaman. This yeah, is fantastic. Perfect. Yeah, we, we talked about how Shaman had to win a game in this set, and somehow we must have cursed <laughs> Diamond because that, that keeps uh, going against our prediction. Yeah. That fast Shaman seems to be a little bit of a liability for Diamond it here. It has really struggled, struggled for him so yeah. far. I mean, that matchup is one where the Shaman tends to be very, very disadvantaged. The Hunter, structurally, is a really yeah. good matchup there. Uh, though losing that early matchup to the Druid, I think, uh, maybe has Diamond a little rattled. Yeah, it, to be fair, though, it was very close. He could have yes. drawn a Crackle or a Lava Burst and potentially sneak a win there. Yeah. Well, uh, I feel the interesting thing about the Shaman deck is that Usually, you want uh, you want to have a deck that's just wild, explosive, can win against anything. Those those are really good factors. But usually, you want to to, to that list of good things. You want to add always beats these decks, and <laughs> and it, it feels like that part is kind of missing. So, um, but we'll have to see. Maybe, maybe there is some uh, some tech in that deck that is particularly good against other decks that we just haven't seen in Ping Ping Ho's lineup so far. But it is going to be Shaman versus Shaman, and Ping Ping Ho uh, is. Allegedly, the shaman. So uh, he had a few uh, few words why uh, why that is. Uh, basically, I don't 
，我带了萨满德鲁伊和猎人啊。那当然，其中我最喜欢的是我的萨满，因为萨满本人玩萨满不是理所当然的吗？ Well, the shaman himself will、uh, be facing a counterfeit, I guess. I really hope the winner just picks up the doom hammer at the end of the match. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's one interesting thing too. We haven't seen the doom hammer in、uh, in the mech shaman list. Yeah, no, that, maybe, that, maybe there's been a complete like、uh, removal of any card over four mana from that deck. It's so <laughs> strange, though. If your strategy is to go for phase, Doom Hammer seems like an excellent card. Doom Hammer goes for phase, then it goes for phase again, again. twice every turn. <laughs> seems pretty good. And the overload, not really a problem since at that point your hand is mostly empty anyway. Yeah, certainly empty in the <laughs> case of this deck.、Yeah. Might be a spare, but from the clocker. What he needs is、right. quick shot. Quick shot would be a、uh, core rager. I don't know. That, that could replace <laughs> your fell your fell reaver. Yeah,、oh. it's empty anyway. I suppose. <laughs> All right. Well, this is going to be、uh, the the final game.、Um, it's it's two two. It's the shamans, and、uh, someone has to advance. And whoever doesn't will have to be in tomorrow's matches. Tomorrow we'll have the decider matches for you guys. All the players who have one and one records will、uh, battle it off for the remaining spots. The BlizzCon. Well, the winner goes straight to BlizzCon next week. Yeah. Yeah, that's something worth.、Uh, <laughs> well, there's a lot of. We actually had not seen Diamond draw lava burst yet in, in any of these games. You've seen him、I、play the shaman. I think we、Shaman. saw him in. in、uh, I was like today. Yeah, today. Today, no. today that's true. Earlier on, there's some nice curving here from Diamond. He does have a one and a two. He could also keep the rock pyre if he wants to use it for、uh, for removing an early minion from Bimbing Ho's side. I think rock pyre is the only card you'd consider keeping here, right? Uh, Pain Bingo, yeah, yeah, I think so. I believe、too. so.、Uh, Defender Vargas is is pretty strong, but it's slow. Yeah, you, it's a card that you want in the matchup, but you need to be able to interact in the early turns. You want to find things like Zombie Chow, like Haunted Creeper,、mm -hmm. that allow you to contest your opponent's minions with your own. Yeah, almost certainly he will lean towards、uh, trying to increase his chances of finding those cards that you mentioned. Oh,、well, we saw a two drop there briefly, and it is going to be a Nerubian egg and a totem with a totem golem and an activator for their Nerubian egg. The, the, the interesting thing is, I believe you have to lead with a totem golem just so you don't have to commit to playing、uh, a buff、uh, the following turn. Let the turn one greetings coming from both players. <laughs> greetings, friend. They're friends. They're they're、oh, they're both thrall. It's、so. very nice. So much on the line, but still still、uh, showing a lot of sportsmanship. Will、there. we see the double one drop again? Oh, certainly now. Yep. Oh yes. There you go. Here they come. And we're actually talking、uh, during Pim Pim Ho's first match that he's actually. If he is sort of stuck to form of many of the the versions of shaman he's played in the past, he typically doesn't run with very much healing in his decks. If I think we've seen none of that、yeah. at all in,、so、in the last game. That's that's a very dangerous thing in a deck like、uh, against a deck like Mech Shaman that can put on a lot of pressure and then has those burn spells to、uh, to end the game. Yeah, definitely. If if when do you get the defender of Argus down? Even if you have strong taunts, the damage might already be done from the early minions, and、uh, he would be.、Uh, Dead to something like just a crackle or the lava burst. I'm calling it now. Tuscar Totemic into Vitality Golem wins the job done. Wow. Vitality、well, Totem, not Golem. I think he totem goes. Golem.、Uh, he goes <laughs> with the egg here, and that is pretty interesting to me. It, it allows him to use the Rock Biter and the Flame Tongue Golem, but the, the Anoya the Anoya Tron is the perfect counter. Yeah, both of those things is the perfect thing. Yeah, if he had if he had dropped the Totem Golem that last turn, he could have potentially played the egg and had something to contest、uh, the. The Anoyotron this turn, but now Pippin Ho's、yeah. stuck in an awkward spot where he doesn't have a great way to use his mana. I still like to play it though. I think it's really cool because by doing this, he could a rock biter that and trader is getting that four、yeah. four. But it's just the Anoyotron. It's, it offers the most efficient、mm -hmm. possible play, but unfortunately, lines up very poorly against the Anoyotron that Diamond happened to have in his hand. Yeah. I think one aspect of Diamond's Shaman deck that we've understated is the fact that. Shaman as a class, the the weak point is really if you start losing on turn one or two, you're you're done, especially with an aggressive version. But his deck having such a ridiculous number of one and two drops, it makes it so unlikely that that situation would ever arise. He's all he's always winning on turn two or three. And he's always getting those first few attacks. Well, he doesn't have some of the finishers, some of the mid range cards that、uh, we've wanted to see in the past. Oh man, that、wow. is strong. Here, Pimpico having to use the Rock Biter just to break the Divine Shield on the Noitron, trying to set up the、uh, Flame Tongue next turn to be able to allow him to trade that 
uh, egg into one of the other minions, but the Flame Tongue from Daimeng clears up the Totem Golem, leaving him kind of back in square run. Yeah. This spare part is actually a very powerful one as well because uh, it's it's pretty unlikely that Ping Ping Ho will be able to deal with the board, especially that totem, anytime soon as the other creatures are easier to deal with right now. So if that totem does make it through, he can maybe uh, return it and reposition it yeah, to get some bonus <laughs> damage extra, in a future turn. That's true. Sure. Well, rough down here. He might end up just hexing the, <laughs> the flame tongue. But you, you want to pop that egg, but it, it only takes one. I mean, uh, if you if you could choose to go with the flame tongue and you pop that egg to get that four four out, it only takes one power off the board because the flame tongue flame oh. tongue buff would shift. The, the Anoyatron is the only mech. Well, that is true. Diamond does have a second one in his hand, so if you ping ping ho, maybe that's a consideration that uh, you also have to think about. So there is a chance that there is no more mech coming. All right. Well, there is no mech coming, and things are going to start looking really bad here. I yeah, mean, how this much? Is this is 12 damage. Yeah, getting close to lethal already. I mean, the uh, the Clockwork Gnome and the Power Mace can come down for Diming this turn. That he can, even if he wants, he can just clear this off. I imagine he will to protect his Flame Tongue. And the uh, oh no, he's actually just, just going to go with the, power, the Piloted Shredder. Uh, you know, strong minion here is, gets him for five damage. So now, with the piloted shredder, he's actually even resilient to something like a lightning storm. If uh, if Pimping Ho were to pick up a lightning storm to try and clear the board, it really wouldn't do that much. And now, Pimping Ho, the shaman himself, is in the back foot against uh, Daimeng's mech shaman. Yeah. Um, I feel, though, that Hex kind of gets quite a bit of damage off the board, again, because it denies the mech. Unfortunately, the, the, the zero 01 is not actually not a zero actually one. Zero one. Yeah, it's going that to be a, a two That one is an frog. angry frog right there. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's going to do it, actually. It's. Is it? Uh, no, it's five not and five. quite. Five not five, not no. quite, but it's very, very it's close. It's 10 damage. And as we were saying, Pimping Ho is not really known to run with a lot of healing in his deck, if any. So oh. even if Pimping Ho is able to survive this turn and clear the board, he's like a. a you know, lava shot, uh, lava burst, or crackle away from just ending uh, ending the game. I would expect him to play the Clockwork Gnome here for that extra two damage. The Totem Column, yeah, it's a little bit stronger minion than the Clockwork is, but every little bit of damage counts. Yeah. And he knows Bing Bing Ho doesn't have any healing in his deck, so even if there was some Basically kind of a taunt. yeah, but even then, like so many turns, Diamond still at full HP. There's so many turns for him to draw it and. With that, that is not fire it. elemental from the top, I believe that's going to do it, and Daimang is finally yeah. going to find his win with his aggressive shaman list. Um, yeah, there's no taunt totem, there's nothing, there's absolutely no there's circumstance that Ping Ping Ho can stay in this game. And Daimang will advance to the BlizzCon Finals. 2-0 performance, we've seen all the 2-0s this part of the tournament will have to offer, and all the, all four of those players have advanced. But four more players will uh, will have to uh, fill their seats for the there it is. finals. Doomhammer, the yeah, player picked it up, but uh, yeah, we, we could, we, yeah. <laughs> who knows if they can really? Yeah, <laughs> that thing is really heavy. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> all right, well. Um, those are some great games today. Uh, we still have quite a few games for you guys uh, tomorrow. Uh, as I mentioned, it is going to be all the decider matches to fill the, the remaining seats for BlizzCon. And at the end of tomorrow, we will have our top eight. And uh, those, those guys are going to be pretty lucky, I guess. But, uh, you know, if you guys are going to BlizzCon, if you guys do want to meet the players, there's no worries. Even the people that uh, have not qualified to play in the top eight, uh, all the rest will still be at BlizzCon. They'll be in that area. They'll be checking out. And uh, if you guys want to meet them, if you guys want your mouse pad signed or anything like that, uh, I'm sure they will uh, fulfill your dreams. So what do you guys think for tomorrow out of the decider matches? Do you guys do you guys have any players you guys kind of want to see go through? Maybe, maybe some people from the America region would be nice. <laughs> well, uh, I really want to see live coach go through. It, it would be quite exciting. You guys got two Europeans already. Yeah, That's crazy. What, 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 what is that going to say about the region? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, European Hi. players have. I'm, I'm kind of proud of the, how, how the Europeans have done in this tournament. Ostkaka and uh, Thais both and really like uh, convincingly mm -hmm. went through 2-0. And uh, Life Coach, he he's bringing his own uh, own list. He's the only one playing that slower uh, control warlock. I think it would be cool to have him him go far. Yeah, I mean, we have yet to see an American representative uh, make it through uh, after his great match against uh, Nairia. I'd love to see Purple make it tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. They are, there are definitely quite a few uh, Americans still in the running. And uh, I think if we just play the odds, one of them is 
fairly likely to go through. <laughs> so you guys, you guys will have hopefully at least one champion from each region at BlizzCon to root for. But uh, for now, let's go to Dai Meng and uh, see what he has to say after that great set of games. Thanks so much, gentlemen, and great job on the last game of the day. I am here with its winner, Dai Meng. And Daiming, I want to know, you just beat the Shaman at his own game. Were you looking forward to playing him in a Shaman Mirror match? Uh, uh, um, he said uh, he never really thought anyone else would be bringing Shaman to this tournament besides himself. It's really nice to face another Shaman, um, to face someone else who's using similar cards. Excellent. Uh, you did a, a, an incredible job there in that tournament. We were really enjoying watching this. And I want to know, we have about one week until you play at BlizzCon. You've qualified all the way through in the top eight. How are you going to spend this week? Uh, uh, this is my first time in America, so it'll be really nice to see some things like Universal and Disney. And I want to figure out what are the real differences between the United States and China. Excellent. I hope you do get time to explore in addition to your practicing. And you did tell me you wanted to share a message to the fans, so please. Get the fans for their heart. 我这里有两个消息要告诉大家第一个消息是一个坏消息第二个消息是一个好消息坏消息是明天你们看不见我了因为我没有比赛了好消息是每当我有比赛的时候我还会在这里 um, He said, I have two things to tell to my fans. One is bad news and one is good news. The bad news is you won't be able to see me tomorrow because I've already advanced. And the good news is you'll, you'll see me every time at the interview podium because I'll win every time. That is some good news, Diamond. Congratulations on that. We will see you at BlizzCon. And gentlemen, what do you have to say at the desk? Well, I uh, love the confidence. Uh, the confidence is, is really something that uh, it's just, it's just kind of humorous. You know, <laughs> people really, really hope they're going to win. But in the game of Hearthstone, uh, everybody's got a, a very fair chance. And uh, it's just very amusing to me. <laughs> I just love the fact that he picked up Doomhammer. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> well, if you're not going to draw it, you might as well force the draw. <laughs> All right. Well, we've seen quite a few number of great games today. Um, and we've seen quite a few number of great games in the tournament so far. Uh, we are on our second last day. Tomorrow will be the final day of pre-BlizzCon uh, games. But let's see what we've covered so far. Let's see how the players stand in each of the groups. And speaking of that, we have Group A today. Tice qualified as the uh, the top seed, the 2-0 undefeated player out of that group. And tomorrow, the decider match will be No versus Jab. One of them will also join Tice from Group A to BlizzCon. Yep. From Group B, Zoro secured his spot in the top eight. And the decider that will be played tomorrow will be between Kranich and Life Coach. A rematch from the, uh, their opening game. <laughs> yeah. And then in uh, Group C, Oskaka punched his ticket to BlizzCon today, while uh, we will see Hot Firm versus Nilio in, once again, a rematch from their opening match. And of course, in our final Group D, Dai Meng, who had just advanced in the Battle of Shamans. And, uh, well, he had, I, don't th I don't think he's, he's won anything but the prize. I don't think we're letting him keep that Doom Hammer. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, but still quite uh, quite a lot of games left to be played. So uh, don't don't miss out on tomorrow. All, that's all the games we have for you guys today. However, uh, Saviz, Kibler, it's been another great cast, and make sure you guys check out tomorrow. Uh, but for now, let's go back to our regional tab. Great. Thanks, guys. No, he does not get to keep the Doom Hammer. It's mine now. We had another amazing day here at opening week, and you at home have seen our first four players make it to Anaheim. Tune back 9 a.m. Pacific to see who makes our last four players to the main stage of BlizzCon. That's it for today, and make sure to stick around for the World of Warcraft broadcast. Now we will leave you with our Windows 10 game DVR highlights for today, and we'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>